So the final episode of Love and Lies is here, and with it, it brings the end of Summer of Anime 2017. The season is starting to end. Now, I know many might say Recreators ended already, but still, I mean, this is one of the series I'm watching that has ended from Summer of Anime that I'm currently reviewing, and so I count it as, like, the season now finally officially wrapping on up. So with the final episode, I'm just going to point blank state it is an open ending. It is not satisfying whatsoever. So if you are someone that have been watching my reviews and have been waiting to see how the season will end for Love and Lies, I'm just going to say right now, if open endings make you really upset and you don't like that, this is not a series I recommend you to watch because it's left completely open there's no conclusion, you don't get to see who he ends up with at all, and that's basically it. The ending, the way it's displayed, it looks like it's like, go read the manga, and then you get to see the rest of the story. That's basically the type of ending we got. Now, that's, in a way, it's a good thing, but at the same time, it's a bad thing. Sometimes, endings like this are good, if the series is really, really good, and it's open for it to give more cells to the manga, and then eventually have a season two, it's a good thing, it is. But at the same time, it could be a bad thing if the series has problems already happening till this very point of the series, till the conclusion of the first season. And what I'm getting at is, is that Love and Lies was very unsatisfying. It was a good show, it was enjoyable as a romance, I loved it. I enjoyed watching it week after week. However, it's unsatisfying because there was no progression. Literally, you go back around episode 3 or 4, around in there, that's basically all you need to watch. There hasn't really been much progression whatsoever. There really has been a lack of it. And, I mean, the only progression we've gotten since, like, the early episodes is down in this episode, he has finally admitted that he loves Ririna and also, you know, Takasaki. He, he's admitted he loves both girls, which is cool and all, but that's not really much progression. I'm, it, it's really not. So, in terms of story-wise, it's going at a snail's pace. I didn't really have much of a problem with it overall, because I'm used to romance series trying to do stuff like this. It just it can get very annoying if you really want to see that progression, and the series really lacked that. It was one of the biggest flaws of the series, and with the finale... Basically, it's open ending to where go read the manga. Now, you can also interpret it like this. Now, I'm assuming you followed the manga, it ended properly, and then it's like, like I said, go read the manga. But you can look at the ending as if, you know, it's a harem ending. That's how you could actually view the ending of this episode. You know, to where, you know, Neji, he decides to choose both girls. He's like, I love you both. They're both in a wedding dress. And then all the problems and all of that and the issues were settled right then and there. And then he has, like, a harem ending. That's kind of what you can get from that scene, too. So you're one of those guys that wants your, like, own ending in your head. You can envision that, you know, Neji got a harem ending and everybody ended happily ever after. Besides Nisaka, obviously, because... They didn't really even tackle that, and that's really disappointing, honestly. I'm, I'm a little bit upset about that, because Nisika, the more I look at the way his character is introduced, it was more for shock factor than anything else, because that character, his character that was introduced, could have added such a, a great theme to the show. It, it would have been really cool to see how that was handled by the writer, but that wasn't really ever focused on at all, and the deeper messages of the series weren't really even focused on at all, and so it's just overall very, very disappointing, and that's just how my feelings are. So, that's why I didn't really review last week's episode, because it's basically the same thing that's been going on through the previous episodes, there was not really much to talk about, it was the same thing every single week, basically, and I just didn't want to repeat myself, and so, yeah. Anyways, though, with the final episode, it was enjoyable. There's great scenes and stuff, and, you know, I like seeing Rina be best girl once again. She is a really good character. I mean, out of all of the characters, I think she is my favorite. She's just so good, so pure, and the way she just helps out Neji and cares about him and all that, she's even willing to sacrifice her own happiness for him, just shows how much she does love him. So I really love Rina. Great character. I'm just sad that the series just ended at a snail's pace and didn't really have much to really go on and that's kind of what we're left with so overall will there be a season two i honestly doubt it there's a lot of romance series out there that deserve a season two but they never have gotten one even though they perfectly adapted the manga and i could think of a lot of them in my head actually but i mean 
over the years, when it comes to romance series, usually when a season is made, they're morally meant to advertise the manga or light novel or whatever, and that's about it. They don't really try to ever make another season for it unless it's incredibly popular, and I don't think Love and Lies is as popular as some romance series out there. So, I don't think we're ever going to have a season two unless, like I said, it sells really well, so most likely that's a pipe dream. So, it's a read the manga ending or make up your own ending in your head, and that's about it. So, do I recommend Love and Lies? Do I recommend people to watch this anime? If you want a romance series with slow pace, if you're fine with that, I, I do recommend it. It's enjoyable. It's really enjoyable. But, there's a lot better out there. there there's a lot of anime out there that's way better than Love and Lies and has better themes and stuff. And, I, I just feel like, if you're wanting a really good romance, I recommend not really watching this one. I, that's just my opinion. But, it's still enjoyable. But, it's not the best out there. And so with it, I end it there. Thank you so much for watching my Love and Lies reviews. It was a fun watch, but had its problems. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for leaving a like or dislike if that's what you want to do if you dislike this video. But I mean, thank you so much for all of you that have continued to support me. Thank you so much for all of you that have donated to my Patreon. It helps me out a lot. And you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.